Welcome to the video on operations with fractions. The best way to use this video is to take notes while I'm teaching. So you need to pause the video as often as necessary to get the notes down. And every time the video arrives at a you try, pause, attempt all the problems, press play when you're ready to see the solutions with the work. These are the topics we'll be covering in this video. We're going to start by discussing rational numbers. A rational number is a number that can be represented by a pair of integers, positive and negative numbers, but the denominator can never be zero. We can write fractions in three different ways. You will see that I prefer fractions that have a horizontal bar rather than a slash. Fractions that represent the same rational number are called equivalent fractions. So we'll be doing a lot of reducing and simplifying fractions, and the idea is that as long as we can multiply or divide the top by the same numbers, those numbers are equivalent. So we've got one-third. If we multiply the top and bottom by two, we get two-sixths. If we multiply one-third by three on the top and the bottom, we get three-ninths. And so these are equivalent fractions. So we're going to simplify fractions. What it means to be in its simplest form, or lowest terms, is when there are no common factors between A and B. So every time you do a fraction problem, you want to make sure that your final answer is always in simplest form, even if it doesn't ask for that. So let's take a look at simplifying fractions. There are lots of different ways to do this. You can do prime factorization, you can list out factor tree, a birthday cake method, but we're just going to look at common factors here. So if we're looking at the fraction 10 over 25, I just start thinking of numbers that can divide both of them. It's best to start with the biggest, but if you're not sure, you can start with the smallest, starting with the number 2. I know that 25 and 10 are both divisible by 5, so I'm going to actually divide both of the top and the bottom by 5. So 10 divided by 5 is 2, 25 divided by 5 is 5. There are no more common factors. This is simplified. 5 and 3 are both prime. They don't actually have any common factors, so that's already simplified. Now, 124 and 32. 124 and 32 are both even. And because these are big numbers, I usually start with even. If I know that they're both even and they're big numbers, I'm going to divide them both by 2. So 124 divided by 2 is going to give me 62 over 16. Now, they're both still even. And again, that means I could have divided by 4 in the beginning at this point. But 62 divided by 2 is 31, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. There are actually no more common factors here because 31 is prime. If you weren't sure, you could go try 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, but this is it. When I look at 21 and 59, they're not even, so I can't use 2. I know 21 divides by 3, 59 doesn't. Now, 21 divides by 7, but 59 doesn't. 59 doesn't divide by 29, which means that is simple. Go ahead and give these problems a try and press play when you're ready to see the solutions. Next, we're going to add and subtract fractions with common denominators. When we add and subtract fractions, we must first check that there is a common denominator. If there is, all we do is apply the operation to the numerator and keep the denominator the same. So let's take a look at these examples. 1 over 7 plus 3 over 7. Well, the denominator is the same, so I'm just going to keep the denominator the same and operate on the top. There are no common factors between 4 and 7, so I'm done. I've got common denominator here, so I'll just do the operation in the top. That gives me negative 3. Now, there is a common factor. I also know that when the numerator and denominator are the same, it equals 1. So the answer here is negative 1 over 1, or just simply negative 1. Now finally, I'm going to do the order of operations. So I'm going to deal with these two fractions first. So that's going to give me, these have a common denominator of 5, so 12 minus 5 gives me 7, and then plus 8 over 5. These guys have a common denominator of 5, and then 7 plus 8 gives me eight, uh, 15. Now these do have a common factor of 5. So I'm going to divide both of them by 5, and that gives me 3 over 1, or just 3. Go ahead and give these next problems a try. Press play when you're ready to see the solutions. And now we're going to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. So when that happens, 
we need to get the denominator the same. So how do we get the denominator the same? Well, we can multiply anything by one because that doesn't change it. So we're gonna actually multiply what I like to say one in disguise. Well, one is the same as two over two, three over three, four over four, five over five. So we can multiply a number by five, the denominator, as long as we also multiply the top. So let's give this a try. So if I look at the first example, I see that three and six are not the same. So I'd like to get the denominators three and six to be the same. Well, I like to do as little work as possible. So I say, can I make this three a six using multiplication? Absolutely. I can multiply that by two. But I have to multiply by one in disguise. So that's two over two. So I have to multiply the top by two and the bottom. So that's gonna be on the top, two times two is four, two times three is six, plus one over six. Now I have a common denominator. I can do the operation in the top of five. Five and six have no common factors. This is the final answer. Let's take a look here. There's no way I can multiply five to get to a seven or multiply seven to get to the five. So I'm just gonna multiply by the other number. Now I can't just do what I did. I can only multiply by one in disguise, which means I have to multiply by seven over seven and five over five. So the first fraction is gonna be seven times four, which gives me 28 over 35, minus two times five is 10, over seven times five is 35. Now I have the common denominator of 35. Let's do the operation in the top, and I get 18. There are no common factors between 18 and 35. I could try two, it doesn't work for 35, three doesn't work for 35, five doesn't work for 18, six doesn't work for 35, seven doesn't work for 18, so this is the final answer. All right, I can't multiply two to get to a nine or nine to get to two, so I have to multiply by the other number. But I can't do what I just did, I have to multiply by one in disguise. So that means this first fraction is nine times one, over nine times two. And that second one is four times two over nine times two. So now I've got a common denominator of 18 and nine plus eight is 17. So that is the final answer because 17 is prime. Go ahead and give these a try. Press play when you're ready to see the solution. Great. Now we're gonna move on to multiplying fractions. There are two ways to multiply fractions. You can simply multiply all the numerators, all the denominators, and then put it in lowest terms, or you can reduce at the beginning, reducing numerators with denominators, and then multiply across. I'm gonna actually do it both ways, but I'm gonna show you what I mean. So if we look at the um, expression two to the third, two over three times nine over eight, we can multiply across. Two times nine gives you 18, three times eight gives you 24, and then simplify saying they both divide by six. Or you can look here. Well, two and eight, numerator and denominator, have a common factor of two. So I'm gonna divide both of those by two. I get one and four. Three and nine have a common factor of three, so those will divide by three, and then I get three over four. I'm gonna do these examples both ways. You can pick whichever way you prefer for the you try. I'll show work for both. So let's look at these examples. And the first one, I'm gonna just multiply across, simplify at the end. So when I multiply, I just multiply. I like to think of bikinis tops and bottoms. So one times five is five, four times 12 is 48. There are no common factors between five and 48, so I'm done. Let's look at the next one. Multiplying straight across, 14 times three gives me 42. 15 times eight gives me 120. Now I can see right away that I can reduce because they're both even. So I'm gonna divide both of these numbers by two and I get 21 over 60. And I see that these actually have a common factor of three, which meant I could have divided in the first place by six, but it doesn't matter how quickly you reduce. And I get seven over 20, seven is prime, so I know that I'm done. And finally, I'm just gonna multiply across, I get 30 over 52. Again, I see that they're even, which means I can divide both of them by two. And they don't have any more common factors, so I'm done. So that's one way to multiply fractions. Here's the other way. And the difference 
is that I'm going to try and reduce first and then multiply across. So I'm going to say, okay, 1 and 4 have no common factors. What about 1 and 12? No. 5 and 4? Nope, 5 and 12. So I'm just going to multiply across. And that makes sense because when I did it the other way, I couldn't reduce at the end anyway. Remember, we're comparing numerators and denominators. So 14 and 15 have no common factors, but 14 and 8 do. They're both even, so I know I can divide these by 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So 14 divided by 2 is 7. 8 over 2 is 4. Now when I look at those, I can't reduce those anymore, so I'm done with them. Let's look at these. 15 and 3, do they have any common factors? They can both be divided by 3. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Now I can multiply across. 7 times 1 is 7. 5 times 4 is 20. I get the same answer as I did before. It's just, do I want to reduce at the beginning or do I want to reduce at the end? We'll do the same thing. Numerator, denominator are fine. Numerator, denominator, nothing I can do. Numerator 10 and 4. Now they have, they're both even, so I can divide them both by 2. So again, I kind of like to set it up the same way. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. There's nothing more I can do there. And so I'll bring the 3 and the 13 over. And then I can multiply across. And I get the same answer. So you have to decide if you want to reduce at the beginning or at the end. One is not necessarily easier than the other. So go ahead and give these a try. When I show my work, I'll show it both ways. Press play when you're ready to see that. And the last thing we're going to do is divide fractions. So when we're dividing fractions, we need to talk about reciprocals. A reciprocal is when we switch the numerator with the denominator. So the reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 over 2. But the reciprocal of 5, we have to remember that 5 secretly has a 1 on the bottom. So really the reciprocal of 5 is 1 over 5. And the reciprocal of negative 1 over 7 is negative 7 over 1, or negative 7. The negative doesn't have any effect on the reciprocal. The rule when dividing fractions is you multiply the first fraction by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So we're going to do two examples. Since division is so closely with multiplication, and we already did some multiplication examples. So I notice that there's a division sign which means I'm going to switch this problem here. The first fraction stays the same. The division sign becomes multiplication, and I do the reciprocal of the second fraction. Now it's multiplication, so the rules are multiply across. So 2 times 7 gives me 14. 5 times 1 gives me 5. I can't reduce this anymore. Now, this giant fraction bar here looks really intimidating, but this is just a division sign, so I'm actually going to rewrite this. This is really saying 4 over 5 divided by 3 over 11. Well, if I want to do division with fractions, I need to change the division sign to multiplication and do the reciprocal on the bottom. Excuse me, do the reciprocal of the second fraction. And now I can multiply across. That gives me 44 over 15. There are no common factors, so I am done. Give these a try. Press play when you're ready to see the solution. And that concludes this video on operations with fractions.